Our scripture text comes from Genesis chapter 9, starting in verse 8. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. And here our scripture text ends. Let us consider how we'll apply these words of scripture to our lives today. We begin this first Sunday of Lent on this Lenten journey as we journey towards the cross, as we journey towards Easter and Resurrection Sunday with a sermon series called Again and Again. Again and again, we are in the circumstances in our lives. Again and again, we find ourselves in the wilderness and in the desert. But again and again, God shows up. Again and again, God is here. Again and again, God is alongside of us. Again and again. Again and again and again, friends. For every again in our lives that is full of hurt and full of pain, there's an again and again that God is there in the midst of it with you and with me. We come to this story here of Genesis chapter 9 where literally the earth has been wrecked. It has been in havoc. It has been in full utter chaos, cosmic chaos of floods, of a global disaster. And yet again and again, God shows up right here on the water's edge. God meets them. And alongside of the various watery chaoses of our own lives, God meets you and me. And in fact, so much so that within our own Christian tradition, it is water itself that becomes the very symbol of the Spirit of God in our lives, that the floodwaters become the very waters of baptism within Christian theology, that there on those edges of those waters, God meets you and me, calls us beloved, names us as children, Indeed, in the Gospel of Mark, which is the other text of the lectionary today, it's Jesus going to the Jordan River from Galilee to find John and to be baptized there. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved with you. I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the desert into the wilderness to be tempted. Friends, this is the same theology from Genesis to Jesus to Moses to Paul to the people of Israel to the people of the church today for them and for you and for me. God meets us again and again and again in the circumstances of our lives. 
And the call for us again and again is to go back into those circumstances, into those painful situations, to go back out into the world, but now changed, now delivered, now in some way called. We have this vocation, this calling, this sound of God that has come out to us, that has named us for who we are, who has claimed us in the Spirit and says, now you are prepared to go along on this journey, to enter into Lent, to lengthen our days, to allow the light to come pouring into our darkness, to recreate us again and again. Friends, we have this promise is literally written in the sky every time it rains, every time we see the sun pour through those clouds, and we see that bow in the sky. It is this forever promise, not only to you and to me, not only for all of humanity, for all generations to come, but for all creatures. That God entered into a covenant with all of us. Friend, where do you find yourself on this first Sunday of Lent? What watery edge have you just finally been able to get off the boat wondering if you're going to survive? What watery edge, what shore have you come to knowing you are in desperate need of God, desperate for a sign in the sky, desperate for a promise, desperate for a word, desperate for a sense that the Spirit of God has descended upon you. Again and again, God comes and meets us. Again and again, God is here. Again and again, asking us to go right back into the wilderness to go back into the water, to go back to the flood, to go back to the chaos. But under new circumstances, under the circumstance of me knowing who I am, as we just came out of our last sermon series, I am unique. God made me, named me, claims me, anoints me, calls me, sends me into the world. God has transformed me and is continuing to transform you and me. God promises to you and me to be with us over and over and over again in our lives. God comes alongside of us in the same way that he did Noah. Sometimes calls us to do big things like build an ark. For the floods that are to come. Sometimes God calls us like Jesus to go out into the wilderness and be tested and tempted. To see what we're made of. To see who we really are. To be able to claim that unique identity and to live into it. To intentionally engage it. Sometimes. Sometimes we look around and go... I don't think I can face this stuff anymore. Sometimes we are Moses out in the desert going, why me? Don't call me, call somebody else. But friends, here's the whole deal. You and I are here together on this Lenten journey. You and I are here hearing God call from the sky. You and I are here hearing those words again. You are my beloved. In you I am well pleased. You and I stand here looking at the bow in the sky, seeing the promise, seeing that everlasting covenant, and knowing God is here even when we don't always feel it, even when we don't always see it, even when we don't always hear it, even when we don't always feel it the Spirit of God on us. We come back to these texts over and over and over again, again and again and again, hearing, hearing their words, reminding ourselves, reminding one another, 
and taking it back out into the world, knowing that as we do that, we see God show up. We hear God show up. We feel that promise. We make it an actuality. Not just for ourselves, but for others as well. God meets you and me and then sends us into the world, living into that promise. Will you enter this Lenten journey that way? Living under that name of beloved, living under that power of the Spirit of God descended upon you and me, living under that promise of that bow in the sky, living under that promise that no matter how many times it rains, no matter how hard the rains fall, that indeed on the other side is sunshine coming through the clouds. You and I get to live that out as we walk out into the world, as we get to take that promise, that proclamation, that word out into the wilderness of our lives. And as we encounter people who are living in the desert, sometimes more so than you and me, get to say, but God is here again and again. God will meet you. God is meeting you. God has met you and God will meet you again. God, we come to you knowing you've already come to us. You've already shown up. We leave our Galilees finding the Jordan, finding the baptizer, descending into the waters as a spirit descends on us, names us, claims us, empowers us, sends us right back into it. God, we've built the ark, we've floated on it, we've endured the storms, the craziness, the chaos. And we find ourselves on the shore, kissing the sand of that shore, hoping to stay on that shore. And then you remind us, I'm never going to do that whole thing again. But inside that promise is also a sense that it's going to rain again. And every time we see those rains, ah, oh, we shudder, oh God. We shudder. But God, remind us in the midst of our fear that we have faith, that you've given us bravery and courage to be the very presence of you in these circumstances, in these boats, in these floods, in these waters, and you send us back in to rescue others, to seek and to save, to provide hope and healing, to be people of grace. And God, we believe in that promise. We believe in that hope. We believe in that love that we as your church are bringing your kingdom. And so God, we lift up that prayer that Christ taught us saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.